Hey everyone, Brad here with Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Just letting you know, for minute 242 until minute 1552, we will be discussing Kick-Ass 2 in great depth, the movie. So if you don't want any spoilers, go ahead and skip past to minute 1552. Also, don't forget to be active on our Facebook at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. And also don't forget to drink that delicious Ocean Spray Cranberry Fruit Juice gets rid of your bladder infections it's very succulent especially with vodka anyway here you guys go hope you enjoy the podcast happy hunting hello and welcome to episode 18 of treasure hunting for nostalgia this is brandon this is brad this is nick back in full full force back in full force <laughs> uh... i can't even remember why i couldn't come last night i think i made plans with my wife and i didn't want to break them. It was weird schedule. Uh, we said we were going to do that afternoon. That's but right. Then, that's what it was. Then Brad over here was like, <laughs> I can't do this afternoon. So we d- did it in the morning. That's right. Yeah. I what? actually took my I took my wife to play disc golf that morning. Oh, okay. I've been playing disc golf for the last seven, eight months or so. And I finally took her out to this course over across from uh, Hal Park. It's a really, really short course, like, it's very good for beginners. Like it's probably a par two court. Like every hole, you should make it in with in two throws or less, or at least two throws. If you get it in more than two throws, it would be considered a bogey if you're familiar with golf terms. Uh, so that was fun, and um, and that was about it. But we made plans. I didn't want to break them. Did you see Kickass again? I did. That we actually saw that the night before we went to the drive-in over by your place. Actually, mm. that's fun. Do we want to just go ahead and talk about it? So, uh, Kick-Ass 2, really don't do movie reviews on this, but... Uh, I think we should start. <laughs> but, we should start with Kick-Ass 2. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't want to get spoiled, we're probably going to be talking about this. We'll put a little disclaimer in the beginning of the pod, and Brad can come in and say, Hello guys, this is Brad here for Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. <laughs> uh, from Minute... Two to seven, we're going to be talking about Kick-Ass 2 as, lo- as well as spoilers, so please skip ahead if you don't want to hear that. Yeah, that'll save Brandon for saying, spoiler alert, like <laughs> every other sentence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know you guys like that, but you know, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have a combined consensus Some of this movie. It was really good. I loved it, yeah. It, it was awesome. What's disappointing to me is I, I usually trust Rotten Tomatoes for uh, a good site to judge as to what movies I want to see, but I like Kick-Ass 1 so much that I cho- I went. To, I was really excited to go see Kick-Ass 2, but it's only getting a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. I was kind of bummed by that. I disagree with the critics on this one. In fact, if you look at the site, they have a, um, what's called the user's review, mm-hmm. and it's up in like the 80% oh, okay. so it's doing really well amongst the casual viewer, and the critics aren't liking it so much for whatever reason. Is Rotten Tomatoes based off of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? That I don't know. I'm I, not a, I'm I not always a... link those two when I hear <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. So do I. And I think they have a picture of a killer tomato on their website. Do they? I never know. I actually use it on my phone. I, it's an app called Flickster that I use on my phone all the time. So I'm not too familiar with the Rotten Tomatoes website, to be honest. What did you guys really like about the movie? I like the motherfucker. <laughs> that, that that was funny. That was I took over on to see it, and that was his favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> the way that he became a motherfucker, the motherfucker was awesome too. He, he found uh, his mom's old um, dom- dominatrix uh, outfit or whatever. It was pretty funny. Oh, you should have saw him crying when he busted when he had the anal beads hanging there. <laughs> <laughs> he was dying. What was funny is, um, I like I said, I took my wife to go see that last week. And I don't think she knew what that was. Like, I was busting up. I, I knew it was coming. I was still laughing at that. And she was like, what are you laughing at? <laughs> like, I'll explain it later. Don't worry. Uh, I do have to mention in the, the trailers before that Don John movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Nick started busting up. with. He's like, the things I care about most are <laughs> my car, my room, my house, whatever. My, my boys, family. My family, oh. my boys, my girls. And my poor. <laughs> and Nick started busting Well, up. it was funny because it just kept going over and over. So yeah. Family, car, po- uh, movies, family, porn. And then it was, just, <laughs> it was on a loop. It was funny. Yeah, that movie looks pretty good. I, I don't know how they're going to make a whole movie out of that, though. It seems like a, a very simple concept. I, I'd like <laughs> to see it, but I don't know how they're going to do it. 
So kick ass. Um, my favorite part was Hit Girl. Hit, yeah. I think Hit Girl kind of stole the show. She was she's an awesome character. I love the, the the all the conflicts that she went through. A lot of internal conflict. You know, trying to figure out who she is, whether or not she should listen to her step. Well, he's not a stepdad. I guess he's a foster parent. Um, Marcus, I believe his name is, because he was trying to dissuade her from being Hit Girl. Because he, you know, he, it's extremely dangerous. He wanted her to be safe, but. In the end, Hit Girl just had to be who she was, and she was Hit Girl. One of my favorite parts also was the shark. The <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting there for the whole time. Yeah, and I, every time I saw it, because it looked like one of those sharks <laughs> from Strange Wilderness. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. And um, something else I have to mention is uh, when, when Nick and I were watching it, and the girls were all watching the... United J movie or whatever they were called, and the one girl's like, "I'm soaked." Nick was like, "Ooh, gross." <laughs> <laughs> well, it is gross. I mean, they're, they're playing teenagers. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I didn't even hear that when I was. Uh, <laughs> I think my grandma was laughing too much. But um, I think usually I don't connect to characters in movies, but Hit Girl, I really connected Me to. Too. Like when she came to him after they ditched her, I was like, "He should give her a hug." <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like that's hecka jacked up yeah it was messed up I went back and watched the first one again after I watched the second one and Big Daddy was like he tore it up oh, he yeah, was yeah. hella strong yeah he he was like a force to be reckoned with I kind of like don't like how Colonel Stars and Stripes died so early in the shit in the you know movie. you know that's why Jim Carrey bashed that movie <laughs> because they killed him all <laughs> they cut a bunch of his scenes and killed him all yeah. <laughs> I was kind of thinking that too yeah, <laughs> you got a dog on your ball. <laughs> that was pretty funny. What was funny is that he he always made a big deal about you know using proper language, but then he called the guy kick ass and night bitch. <laughs> like, you're using bad language. You didn't have any qualms about that. I like the uh, final scene when um, he's training and you see the metal helmet sitting there on the uh, side. Yeah. And you hear about part three. Mm -mm. The, he already wrote the book for it and mm -hmm. he's pressing the studios to do the movie soon before they grow up too fast, the characters. Right. So um, it looks like it's going to be the final conclusion coming up pretty soon, maybe in the next two years. I'm wondering how they're going to get Kick-Ass and Hit-Girl back together because they kind of... Went their separate ways at the end. Of the only thing I could think of is maybe she calls him to go to New York, or maybe the uncle who was in prison comes out for vengeance on the mm, motherfucker. Yeah, that could. But I don't see that guy dressing up as the supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first one, uh, the dad didn't dress up like uh, a supervillain. That's true. Either. Yeah, he was just a mob guy. That's true. But yeah, this is a great movie. The. Uh, Mother Russia ki killed oh. it in that movie. It's like she was in a whole different league. Like you, you have, uh, I don't know how to relate to it, but uh, in video game terms, but um, it's just like no one else compared could even touch her. They were all just playing games. And, yeah, the, the, and the other bad guys weren't didn't even do anything. They just watched her most of the time, yeah. <laughs> like Black Death and uh, what was what was the Mongols' name? Like Genghis. <laughs> Ma Genghis Carnage or something. Wasn't there like, that? like a tumor mole or something, or the mole yeah, 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 or something, yeah. And they were just like, "Holy shit, it's <laughs> gonna turn it up." It's like a Mel Ivan Drago. Yeah, and she. That's what it looked like. Yep. Did Did yeah. they mention that in the movie? You're no. Mel. Okay. No. I don't think so. Okay. But I was thinking this. I mean, I guess everyone's probably thinking that that knows what Rocky Four is, or a female Ivan Drago, I should say. <laughs> Mel Ivan Drago. It might as well be. <laughs> Yeah, and the way Hit Girl killed her was pretty awesome too. Yeah, you know I I liked it and it kind of took me by surprise, but it's funny that even Kickass didn't know that the little the little syringe that she had was filled with um, adrenaline, adrenaline. And, he, and of course you're going along thinking it's you know it's gonna put you down, it's gonna put you to sleep if. Uh, if you're ever in a bad situation, why would she not just tell him that? I know. She said, "She says only use that if you're in a dangerous situation, like it's a suicide, it's a last resort." Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that, I thought it was uh, like a like a super serum that would would give you extreme power but kill you in the end. That's what I thought it was. I I took it as use this if you're being tortured uh, yeah. and you don't want to talk or something. Oh, yeah, okay. that, that, I think that's what they were trying. Yeah, to that's what they're trying to imply uh, too. Yeah. Because even Mother Russia was like, "You're not going to kill me with that." Right. And oh. then she stuck Hit Girl with it, and yeah. you know what happens after that. <laughs> yeah. 
What's really impressive about that Hit Girl character, that, that actress is only like 15, yeah. 14, something like that. She's amazing, man. Yeah. She like like you said, I I really connected with her. Like she she gave a couple of speeches during that film, and I was just like, wow. Mm-hmm. I got a little misty eyed. Like when she made the when she was saying goodbye to Marcus, saying you know I'm not I'm not whatever something McCready, Mindy McCready. I am Hit Girl. That's who I am. I was just like, oh, that's so fucking tight. Yeah, I loved that. Are you gonna see Carrie? I think I might. Yeah, that's a- <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care about that. I think I've seen that movie once, and I was like, all right, it's a decent movie, but I wouldn't see the remake unless, but now that I know that she's in it, mm. I will. Yeah. Yeah, that shark at the end, when it came to life, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of I kind of didn't want to see the motherfucker die. He, You know how he was kind of remorseful when he you know, fell in the water? Because uh, he was like... Just let me go and kill me. Then like, I'm alive, I'm alive. <laughs> yes. And then the shark is like, No, you're not. <laughs> that ca- that caught on crown by surprise. The shark coming alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he said he wanted to be a martyr like Jesus or something like that. Didn't he say that? Oh, I don't know. When he was, he, he was Kickass was trying to save him, and he's like, No, I, I won't let you save me. I'm gonna be a martyr like Jesus. <laughs> but that was pretty funny. It, it was funny. Um, after we when we were leaving the theater. Uh, I'll crown and I, there was only like six people in the theater because we went at uh, a time. Uh-huh. Uh, we, right when we were coming down the stairs, this guy jumped in front of Uncle Ron and <laughs> flew through the through the doors. <laughs> and Uncle was busting up for like two minutes. I was like, what? He's like, that guy thinks he's a superhero. <laughs> he's going to be doing that all day. It's like a tie. So I, I've been contemplating this in my head. Oh, I don't sure. know the answer to the question. Is there a difference between good dick and evil dick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> when motherfucker's like, yeah, you try good dick, now try evil dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then evil dick couldn't get hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Under too much pressure, I guess. <laughs> that was a pretty funny part. <laughs> That's yeah. like a dark though. He went there with the intent to rape night bitch. Yeah, yeah. I was like oh no, don't do that. <laughs> Just kill her. <laughs> Things got pretty dark in that movie. Yeah, like John Link was almost character got killed for that, basically that no reason. Yeah, yeah. It's like damn, all he was doing was trying to give uh, the motherfucker. I don't even know what his real name is in the movie. Demarco, I think. Chris Demarco. Yeah, that sounds right. He's just trying to, you know, give him a message, basically saying, "Get out of this life. It's not for you." Yeah, and, and then they ended up the killing guy. off his dad too. Kickass's dad. Oh, that's right. You're yeah, right. That, was, that was pretty dark as well. You're right. I thought it was pretty funny when uh, Chris DeMarco was in the pool with the two naked ladies, and he was like, these are part of my team. (laughs) 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 Prostitutes. What's funny is uh, I was talking to Tim Wilson. I was trying to get him to go see the movie. He's all, no, I got my daughter with me, and you know, it doesn't really look like it's appropriate. I heard there was nudity in it. I was like, there's no nudity in that movie. (laughs) And then I saw it the second time, and I was like, oh, there's some titties in in that part there. (laughs) Well, that was it. Yeah, that was that was the only time there was any nudity. I mean, there was plenty of vulgar language and lots of violence, of course. And sex in bathroom stalls. <laughs> but you didn't see anything. Nah. It was just implied. Yeah, and I bitch was kind of a horror. I didn't like her. I was like... I wasn't really into her either. It's like, hit girl was going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> she was all like, leave the mask on. I was like, what a freak. <laughs> like on Super. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Hit Girl's such a cool character, though. I mean, she, she's obviously, like, she could kill any of those uh, superheroes at any time. Not that she would ever have any reason to, but she's just, like, head and shoulders above anyone, and she was willing to join their team in the end. It was kind of cool. Yeah. You'd think that she would have, like, a big head and be like, nah, I don't, I don't need to be a part of a team. I'm, I'm, too bi- I'm too good for that. Well, her dad's Nick Cage, so he raised her right. Yeah, he did. It's funny, when I saw... Um... His friend, I can't remember his friend's name, but remember the guy who was in American Horror Story? Yeah, yeah. He, he was supposed to be in the uh, sequel. Ass Kicker? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> when I saw it soon, I was like, he's going to be like the bizarro kick-ass. And then it, and he ended up turning and helping out the evil team for a little bit. Yeah. And then he was like, like they all fought, were fighting. And then, wasn't he like, forget this, and yeah. he left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the character the this the wannabe superheroes were were pretty funny. Like the uh, guy who had the baseball bat, who said it was a levitating <laughs> rod or whatever, and then he turned, he pushed the button, and spikes came out. Or the two, the mom and pop. <laughs> Those are the guns I like. <laughs> they're hilarious. 
When it saves Zach or something with their superhero yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like remembering Zach. Or something. I can't remember. Yeah, because he was already dead. That would have been awesome if they fused together and became one person. That would have been a whole different movie. <laughs> All of a sudden, real superpowers. I thought it was, she'd give like little speeches when she was hitting people with her purse. She'd be like, you boys, knock it off. <laughs> 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 any thought? Any more thoughts to kick ass? I'm looking forward to three. Now that I, I heard that, I, I didn't read that or hear that before. That's really cool. Yeah, Glad they're working on it. Yeah, I, I hope they don't. I hope they include a lot of hit girl stuff because I think she really stole the show in this yeah. movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. She's like a staple in that book. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any doubts that they won't. Cool. Stoked on that. Yep. <clears throat> Treasure hunting. Oh man. <laughs> Not treasure hunting. Yep. Treasure hunting for this week. What you got? I found a deck of magic cards at the Goodwill. <laughs> I think this Asian guy who was working there pre- purposely put a high price on it because when I brought it up there to buy it, he said, oh, you're buying these? <laughs> it was nine ninety nine for like 60 cards. Mm-hmm. And they were all sleeved and everything, but we only found one gem in there, which was a soul ring. Uh, I think it was either revised or whatever. Some old magic set and worth fifteen dollars. Yep, cost me ten dollars. And then I have one other treasure, which is um, it's a cool game, but you already got ten dollars added to your bank. Oh man, you you only have one one thing left. Yeah. Oh man. Um, I also bought a. This one dude sold me a whole well, not a big pack, but like a deck of magic cards, and then a two-player base set for Portal, and a. Uh, limited edition sealed Star Wars Empire Strikes Back card game. Yeah. Uh, I don't even want to put a value on that yet because I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, it's going to be, you know, 20 bucks and then it not sell. Yeah. So I'm going to sell it first before I reveal that. Oh, fuck. So you're still planning on doing that in the future? Yeah, because that Star Wars um, record yeah, yeah, yeah. record that you brought for 50 bucks. Yeah. yeah. That hasn't um, sold it hasn't yet. Sold? It then, Did you say with poster? I have pictures of the poster front and back. Oh, well, they had heck of completed listings on there for like seventy five hundred dollars. Oh uh, well, yeah, I put twenty on it, up on it. It didn't sell. And I put a bite now for thirty. Maybe someone will bite. Okay. And um, those Pokemon's for five bucks. I put didn't sell. <sighs> a whole binder of Pokemon cards, a bunch of foils. It's not Pokemon season, I guess. Yeah, we have gotta wait till X Y comes out next month. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not Brad Treasure season. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll reveal what I have. One of mine. I know I'm spending a little punishment. I should just get it over with. <laughs> then the highlight would be the um, the treasure. Um, can I just spill the spend the will of punishment and get it over with? <laughs> I guess <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> because I, I I need something to look forward to. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> I need to hold the stick. This is so janky. We're gonna have to do like a D twenty now or something. <laughs> you spend that again. Okay. Twelve. Purple Nurple. Oh, Purple Nurple. Vengeance. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Well, which one am I doing? <laughs> Fuck. And I didn't even use all my power. Because I don't want to rip it off. It sucks. <laughs> Alright, your turn. Purple Nurple. <laughs> player's Choice. Oh! $10 added to my player bank next week. Oh, fuck. Alright. <sighs> Back to the treasure. Got that over with. <laughs> you have to describe it. What is Super it? Super Nintendo SNES 599. Now, you said this was an Enix game, and I could have looked up all the Enix games, but the only one I could think of was the Seventh Saga, but you said it was only a seven from boner level, treasure hunting boner level hardness. <laughs> so, I can't think of any other Enix game. <laughs> Seventh Saga? This is worth heck of money, dude. <laughs> How come it says thirty nine ninety nine on it? Oh, five ninety nine. You didn't buy this for forty, did you? Heck no. 
Oh, there's a tag on there for 39? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that. Dimple's so retarded, they don't even get this. Where, which one do you... Oh, Arden? Yeah. I, went, I almost went there the day before, and they might have had it. That's a good find. Seventh Saga? Hella good find. Have you ever played that? Uh-uh. It's a RPG from Enix, the people who make Dragon that's Warrior. A, that's one of the rarest games out there for Super Nintendo. Like, top 15 at least. Huh. I know that. And, um, uh, what's it called? Fair, fair Game sells it for like 50 bucks. Wow. Uh, so, you in the beginning of the game, you select between a bunch of different characters. There's like a... Uh, There's an alien named Wilmy. A human named... Camille. Camille. A healer named Wendy. Asuna. Asuna? Who's Wendy? Wendy's on a whole different game. Oh. Um... There's Legis the Demon. He's pretty cool. Uh, and, there's Valsu the White Man. He's like a sage guy. What's the robot's name? Lux. We never used him. Huh? Fuck Lux. No, yeah. he's a Tatunjin. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever t- the Tatunjin is. It's supposed to be like a robot warrior. It's a heck of a long game. It's so long. Um, yeah, because when, when you think you're done with the game, you go to a whole different continent. And it's so hard. Yep. There's like 100,000 experience points to gain a new level, and the enemies only give you like... Fifteen thousand. And what's and up with that? So hard with that whipmaster guy, Tyson. Yeah, he's so hard. When yeah. you go, go to the other continent, I don't know how people got to the end of that game. I remember when we um, played the game and got there for the first time. Tyson killed us relentlessly. And that's who I'm at right now. Is trying to beat Tyson, but there's nowhere to gain your freaking levels. Yeah, it's a very fun. Game. So you you choose a character, and then in a town, there's a chance that you could meet up with another character and have them join you that you could choose you're basically going after seven ruins which are stones that give you power to defeat the boss and um you could uh, you either fight the person in the town or they might join you and like the best combination that we used to do was legis and wilmy but they were so hard to get together yeah i i did it one time so yeah that was a great find uh seventh saga for those of you who played it go ahead and share your thoughts on it Fun game, super fun game. Oh, I guess I'll reveal my last item. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm excited. A Nintendo NES cart, six out of ten on the Traboner level. Metroid. Oh, that's tight. Where'd you get this one, Arden? Dimple Arden. Oh, cool. How much does this go for? Uh, ten to twelve. Cool. Put that up. Awesome. Yep. Metroid is cool. Here's my last one. PS2 game. Bought it for thirteen ninety nine. Uh, worth around thirty five. Oh, Dark Cloud two. Yeah. yeah, that is worth some money. That's cool. I have actually. I had that game. I have yet to play it though. Um, I remember you used to play Dark Cloud one, and that game was depressing. Really? Why? Well, I, I didn't like it. It's it's a dungeon crawler, and I, I'm a sucker for dungeon crawlers. Randomized dungeons and such. Mm-hmm. So, I am victorious. You are victorious this week. Okay, so we have a question here from the audience. Hails from a guy named Zachary McDaniel. He's been pretty active on our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, iTunes, subscribe to us at the same name. And we're on Podomatic.com. Uh, you don't have to join us there. It's, the place is pretty whack. Uh, I mean, I love Potomatic.com. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggity whack. <laughs> and uh, what about Twitter feed? Oh, Nostalgic Hunter? Nostalgic Hunter. I'm going to do a Twitter account this weekend. See, it's cool. I saw, I, I had posted uh, recording episode 18 now and taking questions. And um, your wife likes that status Nick. <laughs> oh does she yeah but she didn't ask a question <laughs> it'd be cool if she asked a question <laughs> i don't think any questions she would ask you would really be entertaining for the audience <laughs> okay we should start making our wives ask sex questions uh i don't know about that <laughs> oh come on <laughs> by the way i love my wife i just don't think she'd ask any video game related question yeah. that's all i meant It'd be cool if she asked like some off the wall question. We could start talking about it. <laughs> so, uh, so from Pittsburgh, California. Oh wow! Zachary McDaniel asks: Name a video game you really love, but you really can't stand the protagonist. And I, it, it took me a while to start thinking of some of these. Off the top of my head, I really couldn't think of anything, so I had to sit down and think while I was going to the bathroom. 
<laughs> where every was, man thinks. And I was like, that one, that one, definitely that one. Uh, so really? I'll go first. The first one is Donkey Kong Country. Because I hate Donkey Kong, I hate Dixie Kong, and I especially hate fucking Diddy Trixie Kong. Kong. What about Diddy? Yeah, yeah, Diddy okay. Kong. Did I say Dixie Kong? Yeah. That's a combination of Trixie and Diddy Kong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Trixie Kong suck. Ma- Monkey Dick. Monkey <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Diddy Kong did the same, and Donkey Kong just took it out the butt. <laughs> oh, gross. By the rhino. Rambo the rhino. Oh, the rhino. <laughs> Because I, I hated those. That's a good one. Yeah, for some is. reason, I, the Donkey Kong Country series is a really fun game. It is, yeah. But you couldn't... I just never clicked with the Donkey Kong trio. I couldn't. The only person I loved in the game was Cranky, Cranky Kong. Kong. Because he just fucking talked shit through. Like, Back in my day, <laughs> you guys are losers and all this stuff. And I was like... He was the original Donkey Kong that Mario fought. <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, I had to fight plumbers for my princesses. <laughs> Really? Cranky Kong was the original one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. So Donkey Kong, he looks like the Nintendo Vice President, Reggie fils and he just... Is that his name? fils Yeah. I thought, it was like Phil, I thought it was yeah, Phil Zamani. Zamani. No. Uh, it's fils Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't get along with Donkey Kong if he was real. He was cool <laughs> on Captain N and the Game Master <laughs> when Simon Belmont took his toenail off. Oh, he was giant. That yeah. Donkey Kong was huge. Yeah, because he, he, he was a beast. The original Donkey Kong. But the new ones, I couldn't get past them. I couldn't. No. Nope. It's a good one. What did you have, Nick? I only could think of one, and it was Star Fox. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. He's a fag. <laughs> <laughs> his his cast of uh, help is his a whole bunch team. of fags, too. Yeah. You know what? No, I liked Falco. Really? Falco Lombardi, he was like... Was a douche. Get out of here, Star Fox. <laughs> He's like Han Solo. Yeah, but I no. Guess. So, uh, his whole crew was a piece Slippy of shit. Slippy and Peppy. Oh, I actually <laughs> kind of liked Peppy a little bit. Peppy was alright. Slippy Toad, yeah, he was. Slippy was horrible. I was like, oh, go ahead, kill, kill him, him off. Kill him off. I'm not saving you. <laughs> exactly right. I won't get the bonus in the level. I won't get the extra level. Just go and kill him off. I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> I'll shoot him down, too. <laughs> yep. I'll throw my bomb at him. <laughs> Uh, uh, one I had was Resident Evil 2. Which one? <laughs> Re- Resident Evil 2. Which character? Oh, oh, Claire. Oh, I didn't like Claire. Claire's tight. Oh, I didn't like it's, her. You at didn't all. play Code Veronica, did you? Nope. That's why so I'm I'm basing this solely on my playthrough of Resident Evil 2, and she sucks. Well, okay. And I don't. I, like, don't, I don't think that's fair. I, but why not? <laughs> Because Be- Resident Evil 2 came out before Code Veronica. Yeah. I played Resident Evil 2 and I said, I don't like Claire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Jill Valentine, I didn't like her in part oh, three. Oh, come on. <laughs> in part three? No, I didn't like her. Oh. That's. <laughs> That's sickening. So moving on. What do you have? <laughs> uh, my next one is. You had the option to turn this guy off when you played through the game. It was Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, Tails. yeah, I hate Tails. Well, I hate Sonic yeah, and Tails. Sonic was the other one that I kind of thought of as well. But when you're playing through Sonic 2, you have the option of having Tails run directly on your ass, like right behind you. And I was, I, I hated it because he would always get hit and lose all the rings. And when you went in the bonus zone to get the Chaos Emerald, he would always get hit. He would, like, <laughs> never follow you. And so... I found in the options you could turn them off, and I was like, "Oh, thank God, you turn this guy off." <laughs> yeah, I hated Sonic. I still don't like Sonic to this day. I, I like Knuckles, but Sonic, I could give a flying fuck about. <laughs> That's not, the only thing I didn't. I don't love that game. I, I think it's yeah. enjoyable, but I don't like the character or the game very much. <laughs> it's okay. But it's just not my preference. Another one from me is Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, that was a good one. That guy was such a emo, you, emo bitch. I mean, <laughs> coming off the heels of Kane and yes. uh, <laughs> Cecil, oh, I guess Cecil, uh, Cecil, Tara, Edgar, Sabin, Locke, and then you know Cloud is pretty cool. Barrett, Tifa, Tifa, Tifa oh Tifa, yeah. And, but then Squall, he's just sitting there. He in the opening cutscene, he's fighting Kiefer, 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 his enemy, and he gets sliced on the forehead and just. Goes into a depressing it's, state. It's a, in the bridge of his nose. He gets cut. Oh. <laughs> Not even his forehead. And he just quack, 
cries to Christus about it. Throughout the whole game, he's yeah. butthurt about that. I'm like, get over it. Go play some triple triad. That cheers me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, one for me, kind of a combo. Resident Evil 4 and 5. Ashley, the president's daughter, and Shiva from Final Fantasy or Resident Evil 5. Is that where is you that have to Shiva? do, um, like, a... Uh, Carrier missions with Ashley. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And also with Shiva from, she just sucked because she'd always die on you. She, I didn't like her at all. What happens if she dies on you? Do you lose? Yeah. Oh, that heck, it sucked. Yeah, and she's always dying too, like always. Another one for me. And, and then she'll go. Nice work, partner. And then boom, she's dying <laughs> again. Like, just, just stay alive. <laughs> I'm glad they fixed that in the new Resident Evil Six. Uh, the ne next one for me is pretty recent. It's Prototype Part 2. I can't remember the dude's name you play as, but he takes over the reins of Alex Mercer from Part 1 and Alex Mercer from the first one. It's such a badass. Uh, it sucks because in Part 2 he becomes, uh, the, the I guess, the antagonist. Like in the beginning of the uh, game, you find out that he releases the, the virus that he has on the whole New York again and ends up just they're just so disappointing I wanted to be Alex Mercer so bad <laughs> again because I really like that character in real life too oh dude if you had that virus in real life you'd be unstoppable I never played that game so I've seen you play it a couple times but is that the one where you had to skate across the power lines or is that infamous that's infamous oh infamous was fun too same game no not really <laughs> <laughs> You have any other? Yeah. Okay. Um, this other one's kind of a combo. That it, this they kind of ripped off of each other, or one. I guess. I'm doing a combo breaker. <laughs> <laughs> role play. That's a role play combo breaker. Um, either Secret of Evermore and Secret of Mana. The stupid fairy, the third partner. I didn't really like. I didn't care for because I didn't know if it was a girl or a female. The sprite thing. Yeah. But how's that in Secret of Evermore? Secret of Evermore, I didn't like the Zach Morris one to be the the hero. Oh, okay, yeah. And then that... he had the stupid dog. Okay, the I didn't mind him too much. I, I didn't like him because the dog in the first level was cool, the caveman dog. Yeah. But then you go to the next one and he's like a greyhound. And then a poodle. And then a fucking poodle. <laughs> and then he's a robot with a bazooka on his back. <laughs> That's like, true, that dog sucked. I was like, come on. So the, both the dog and the hero, which I think we named Goku... Like, any time you actually had to name your hero, we named him Goku. Yeah. And, uh, Secret That's from of Dragon Man. Ball, Nick. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, my last one is Celine from Lufia 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because she took Ma Maxim away from Tia. That whore. Yeah. That green haired whore. Yeah, I didn't like her at all. And they weren't really, like, in love or anything. No, either. it was just out of the blue. And it, it was, like, lustful. Because he just lusted after her because she was so strong. Yep. That was it for mine. You got any more? Yeah, I had a couple. I had Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 2. Okay, I didn't play that. And um, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, you like that game? No, I just wanted to say <laughs> <I didn't laughs> <Crash Bandicoot. Okay. laughs> Makes sense, I guess. Yeah, but that was a great question. Keep, keep coming, guys, because it's nice to get a fresh person's opinion and, and actually think outside the box. Uh, and I did need to correct you from the episode 15. You asked a course. <laughs> well, it it kind of bothered me. In uh, the Mall Rats question, you <laughs> asked, uh, what did Bank Banky say? Yeah. It's Brody. Bank same, play same difference. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Matty G was talking about the podcast when we were playing poker. He said, I actually really enjoy that Time Crisis game. When I was <laughs> making fun of time crisis. <laughs> All right, Mega Man Eight, <laughs> which Matt didn't really like too much. <laughs> Matt and G was like, ah, "That's a lot of Mega Man talk, don't you think?" <laughs> oh, yeah, he, yeah, he told me he was like, uh, "I wish you guys would uh, cut that banter a little short." <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe he should play Mega Man, and then he'll get into it. <laughs> Uh, so Meg I, I, I like how you named episode 17 Achievement based on that girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Achievement with three question marks. <laughs> uh, was that 16? 16 I named it. Achievement. Oh. All right, so who wants to take a league on Mega Man 8? I played this game like three and a half weeks ago, so 
So I don't have much to contribute. You want to take the lead next? Sure. I, I just finished it. Uh, I, I liked it a ton better than I like Mega Man 7. I'll say that to start out with. Yeah. I, I felt like it kind of... Maybe not perfected, but definitely bettered a lot of the things that they were trying to do in Mega Man 7. Mega Man 8 was made for PlayStation, I believe, and Mega Man 7 mm-hmm. was made for Super Nintendo. And just Mega Man 8, just with the PlayStation module, it, it, it had a lot more capabilities and it was able to pull off a lot more tricks than the, the Super Nintendo was able to do. And keeping it simple with the 2D <clears throat> put a lot of focus on like the gameplay and oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Col- the color was amazing in that game. The color was cool. And they had those cool anime uh, cutscenes mm-hmm. between the, the game action. Yeah. Well, one thing I thought was funny was uh, Dr. Light's voice. Did you, get, <laughs> did you think that was funny at all? Uh, I don't remember what it was like. He, I don't really know what kind of accent he had. It was just like... <laughs> That's what it sounded like. But then, like there was, there was one time you could tell it was like a, a Japanese person doing a, doing speaking English because he called Doctor Wiley Doctor Wiry. <laughs> it was heck of funny. I started cracking up. <laughs> 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 oh, it's like a time. And that I was amidst the you know the the goofy accent that he was doing too. It was just it was hilarious. Every, everyone else had pretty normal voices. I noticed a lot of the robots and Mega Man included. They all had like kids voices mm-hmm. it was kind of weird yeah, yeah. I, I like how they gave the robot master his voices and they taunted you yeah i wrote down a few taunts that i just thought were ridiculous i was like are you serious you know i didn't i didn't hear a lot of them until the end because i you know the gauntlet you fight him over again yeah. but when i was actually playing the game up until the end i was actually listening to your guys our, our podcast just while i was playing so i didn't really listen to much of the music or mm-hmm. the battle scenes until I, until the very end i went through the gauntlet and fought wiley and I listened to him, and I was like, oh, they're, they're talking some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had voices, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, like on Frostman, he said, I'll make a popsicle out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it was like, I think it was Sword Man or maybe Grenade Man, who after he was, be- he was defeated, he said, oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I liked um, Clown Man when he said, oh, "You're gonna be, or, I'm gonna be seeing you in my dreams." After he died, <laughs> <laughs> he also said, "If you got him with that tornado thing, he would say something like, what are you doing yeah, to me?'" Doing? Yeah. <laughs> or he said, "I'll make you join my carnival. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn you into a carny, Mega Man." <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, like whenever, like if you chose Frostman, like. <laughs> I'm Frostman. No, he's like, I'm Frostman. Yeah. <laughs> like, hella stupid, retarded voice. <laughs> like a Homer Simpson esque. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the first level I did was Frostman. And as soon as I saw those snowboards, I was like, ah! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Jump, jump, slide, slide, dodge, dodge, or jump, jump. Yeah, but that's the only thing. Basically, it's kind of like Battletoads, where you have to, you're on a snowboard that's going extremely fast, you have to jump over pits. It's not like Battletoads, because Battletoads, well, they, they give you a little preview of what's coming, so I guess it kind of is. And then, so, um, it'll tell you to jump or slide, and I died plenty of times there. And uh, But Frostman was extremely easy, I didn't even die on him once. Yeah, the, the boss himself was easy, but that snowboard bullshit was... I'm glad He's I such a bitch. glad I got that out of the way until I found out it was in Wiley's castle. Uh, that one, that one was tougher. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, what did you do after Frostman? I went to Tengu Man. He was pretty tough. Oh, I I said out loud, "Fuck this guy," because <laughs> he threw tornadoes at you and yeah. knocked you off the screen. Yeah. I, ugh, he killed me a few times with that. Yep. He got me a couple times also. And he's weak against Frostman too. Yeah, and you have to get him while he's on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. But he barely comes to the ground. He barely comes to the ground. Yeah. You're right. Uh, he did like that one sweeping attack yeah. where you could get him a little bit, and then there was it, one attack where he stayed stationary on the ground for like maybe a second. After he did the, the sweep, he came down and sat there for a second. Yeah, uh, and I thought it was pretty cool when he says, "Are you worthy of my challenge?" I didn't hear that one. Oh yeah, they each had a few of them. <clears throat> yeah, but Tengu Man was tough. I think uh, Japan listened to our podcast where we <laughs> passed him saying that Yamato Man was Hekasari. Because <laughs> yeah. you know how Tengus are a Japanese folklore yeah. creature. 
They're like, well, let's put this in there for them so that they can, <laughs> they could be like, man, J- Japanese are pretty tough. Didn't they make the game before our podcast though? Did they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the, I just want to say a couple of things about the stage. I, I died a couple of times because it's an air stage where you're jumping from platform to platform, but there's wind blowing against you constantly while you're on these platforms, which isn't so bad. I mean, you can kind of adjust, but the thing is you can't adjust in midair if you're jumping. So if you were to jump, you, would, you wouldn't be able to... You couldn't go forward at all. So if, if you just like... Was it forward or backwards? I can't remember. You can't jump back. Like there, those winds were were they increased in that, strength? It was, it was blowing you from behind. That's mm-hmm. what it was, huh? So that's why you couldn't go back. So if you over if you over jump something, or if an enemy hit you while you're in the air and knocked you to the right, you couldn't go back. You would just die. There's nothing you could do. And he, even if you saw like <clears throat> a, an item you want to go back and get, forget about it. Oh, if yeah. you passed it, you wouldn't be able to do it. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty tough, but you know, it's Mega Man. It's supposed to be tough. Uh, after that, I went to Clown Man. <laughs> that, that stage is pretty cool. The toys I like of them. the uh, different bosses. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Cut Man and and everything. That was pretty cool. I hated that lion face you had to fight, but I found out that just out of trial and error, a lot of the mini bosses were weak against that kickball. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really use that too much, other than one of the bosses in the Wily stage, which we'll get to. Um, at, Clown Man was the first guy that I went to actually, so I just beat him with my uh, with my Buster Cannon. Uh, it took a it took a while, but I was able to do it. I, I it took me a second to figure out that you're supposed to jump over him when he's doing that swinging thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I thought that he he has like a rope or something attached to a, a little pin on the ceiling that he's doing swings, and you have to kind of jump rope him. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. I thought if I got hit by that rope, it was going to hurt me, so I just kind of stayed in the corner. That's what I did. I didn't know you had to jump on him. Yeah. I I, I liked the battle though. After I figured out that you could do that, it was a fun battle to fight with him. <clears throat> then I did Grenade Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that junk eye that you fight in Grenade Grenade Man's level is also against the ball. It actually killed it pretty easy. What did that make you think of? Grenade Man? No, 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 the the floating eye thing. Oh, nothing. Did, Actually, did it it made me think of um, Cyber Eye from the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. That's gay. That's not <laughs> what I was going for at all. <laughs> what, what, what are you going for? Uh, I had to look up the name. It's the from level nine in, Zel- in the original Zelda. Oh, it's it's named like Petra or something like that. Like Petra. That fly thing. Yeah, it's just it's oh, a floating eye yeah, that had a bunch yeah. of smaller floating eyes circling around yeah. it. I thought that's what it was kind of, you know, doing a little homage to that mm-hmm. but, because it looked almost exactly like it, oh, yeah, except that for sense. that it had it had like little garb. It was garbage instead of a floating eye, but <laughs> it was like it, it was designed the exact same way. Like even though the patterns that the floating things would do were very similar. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I thought that was cool. Way better than my cyber jar. <laughs> uh, after that, I did sword man because I was like, I've got to do this guy's level. That guy was tight. I like that guy yeah. a lot. They had puzzles in every room or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. level was cool too. You're right. Anybody have anything to say on Swordman? He was chivalrous. Yeah, yeah he was. He, I think him and um, Shade Man could, you know, go out and have a good time. <laughs> and he fought with honor. He he didn't. I don't think he talked too much shit. No. He was kind of like, uh, just yeah, like you said, chivalrous is a good word for him. Just like Rubicon from Final Fantasy IV, mm-hmm. how he would heal you before the battle. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Rubicant or Rubicante? I say Rubicant. Oh. I think in the DS version they call him Rubicante. Mm. Huh. Like a Spanish version. He doesn't look Spanish. He's fiery, like El Diablo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't, does, if my thinking of the right guy, doesn't he have like a robe on or something? Yeah. Like that? That's yeah. Kind of, it kind of looks like a bullfighter that has like mm-hmm. a. Yeah, a, a matador. Robe. Yeah. yeah. He's a El Diablo Matador. <laughs> Remember on Mad TV? El El Di- Apple. And then El Diablo Negro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Astro Man. Uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Rubicon uh, also had a sombrero. What? 
<laughs> you don't remember the sombrero? No. When he opened his coat and he's weak against water, uh huh. And then he throws on a sombrero real quick. <laughs> no, he doesn't. You, you must not have played the DS version. <laughs> I played like two minutes of that game. And instead of throwing flames at you, he has maracas. <laughs> So that's why I think it was a Spanish version. <laughs> the Spanish um, is it element. Some, is it sombrero mm -hmm. nacho hat? <laughs> or is that too American? No, that's Simpsons right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Astro Man. Uh, I just put disappearing platforms and crickets. <laughs> oh, I hate those things. Because the crickets returned, right? They returned? What do you mean? Because like, they were in like part... So, oh yeah, yeah. The the things that you are on the ground, you can't shoot them because yeah. Doctor Light can't design a <laughs> angled arm. <laughs> yeah, that's bullshit. But yeah, the the floating platforms that disappear were kind of a pain in the ass. Um, There's also a couple of mazes in that in that level. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suck dick. And the, it took me a while to realize. I I knew that it looped around from left to right, but it also looped around from up to down. Oh, I didn't. I don't know like that. if you kept dropping down, you it would it would loop. Oh, I just did, knew the left and right one. Yeah, so I was like going, when is this? When am I going to hit the bottom of this <laughs> thing? And finally, I realized, oh, it's looping. <laughs> uh, the app, again, I didn't I didn't know that they, that they had voices until I did the gauntlet. But Astro Man, do you remember what he said when you first fought him? Nuh-uh. He was a bitch. He's like, oh, I can't believe you found me. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? I remember that now, yeah. <laughs> he, he kind of reminded me of, like, Brian Covarrubias. <laughs> <laughs> Just something that he would say. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like something he would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, I, when I did the gauntlet with him, I realized that he was weak against the, the homing missiles. But yeah. I didn't have the homing missiles when I first fought him, so I just used the buster cannon against him. It took a long time, but eventually I figured out his pattern. I, I was able to kill him with the buster cannon. He just, he was, those, those bosses that just float around on the top and never hit, come to the ground, they, they bug the hell out of me. I yeah. guess it's a good strategy, but it just bothers me. It's not very honorable. Gyro Man in Mega Man 5... He floats above you, but he also has clouds blocking, so he doesn't. You don't know where he's coming from. Oh, God. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's weak against uh, the gravity weapon, and he just drops to the ground when you hit him with it. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, was there an Aquaman? Aquaman was a. He he was a, he was so. His voice bugged me. Uh, <laughs> What did he say? I don't remember him saying. I don't remember what he said, but he was he he talked real high pitched voice. Oh really? Yeah. I like Very that flamboyant. when you first entered his, uh, the, lair. whatever you want to call it, the lair, yeah, that's a good word. He, he like, sp spell out something in a rainbow that said Aquaman. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Heck of I was yeah. like, oh, that guy is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a rainbow and it said Aquaman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this search man guy. I like search man. He, oh, the commando guy? With two heads? Yeah. So, and you got to fire his bush? <laughs> Yeah, you, you use the sword, uh, the flame sword that you got from Sword Man. Yeah, to get because he would hide in the bushes, and then he would like use the homing missiles on you. And then if you cut down the bushes, you could attack him with the flame sword. Yeah, that was a cool boss. I like I like the boss. I I don't even know how I would beat him if I didn't have the flame sword though. Yeah, yeah that game was very innovative. Yeah, it was. It was cool. I like I like that boss, and I like that level too, the Search Man level. <laughs> Wally's Castle. I'm at a loss because I don't have anything written down for Wally's Castle. The first level was a bitch. Uh, you, oh, that's the that's the jump jump slide, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you, fuck that. Yeah, I remember dying so many times on that. I bought the power up where you could actually attach body parts to you and the chips, and you start with four lives instead mm -hmm. of two. That's a good idea. I I never, I bought three power ups and I didn't get enough to to do that. I didn't get another bolt because they don't have any bolts in the Wily stage and I didn't want to backtrack. It's so I thought about doing that. Yeah, Brad was like, oh, just get the extra life because it's only four screws. That shit's six screws. I didn't have enough. Oh, I had. I, I didn't know. I only I had, had, I six. think, two men to fight that boss. What was the boss? It was a hard boss, too. It was, it was a, a penguin. Spider. No, it was a penguin thing that, oh, like, the penguin that hung up on from the, the ceiling and then it would drop three boxes and two of them would attack you and... And it, the only way to columns. attack it, yeah, it was columns. You're exactly the only way to attack it was with uh, the, the ball. ball. 
That was like the only time I ever used the ball. And that, I only had one sliver of life left for like, I don't know how I did it, but he dropped down like five different times. And I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to have to start all the way back over. But I ended up winning, and I was so proud of myself. That I was so pissed, dude. I got through that, and I, bu- I lost to that guy. I had to go through the freaking yeah. snowboard thing again. That was so fucking annoying. Yeah, I did that like twice, and I was like, this sucks. So, you know, on Tango Man's level, when you actually... My nipple still hurts. <laughs> uh, on Tango Man's level, when you could fly on Rush... And then yeah. Eddie helped you out, and the flip top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why couldn't they do that at that part? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, just do it like another that scene instead of the snowboard scene. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no. Would... He's saying, why didn't Rush just come along and help him rather uh, than go on the snowboard? Yeah, because Mega Man should have known that shit was hard. <laughs> I don't know. There were only two places where, maybe three, where he had to slide. Yeah, where you wouldn't have been able to to ride the Rush jet. I mean, but you can just jump off. Yeah. I, I remember telling Brandon, I was like. Yeah, you only have to slide like three times. He's like, yeah, but the rest of it, we have to fucking jump. Jump, <laughs> yeah. jump, jump. <laughs> and then that one where you have to jump and then do a long jump and then oh. there's like three short ones. It's like, come on. That's fucked up, dude. I hated that part. And then what I hated when it said, jump, jump, and then you weren't <laughs> supposed to jump. You had to wait yep, for like yep. two seconds before jumping. I got to the point where I was just watch. I was just watching where the snowboard was in relation to the ledge. I would just wait until the very last second and jump. Mm. It was... Yeah, that was a bitch. I could probably do it in one try now because I've done it so many times. <laughs> but it was a bitch. What's Wally Stage 2? Uh, the level I didn't really... Oh, that was one of the ones where you uh, flew around on the rush jet. Yeah, and got it was. help from, uh, like I said, Eddie and Flip Top and... What is his name? Beat. Beat, yeah. <clears throat> Gay beat. Yeah. Dick beat. Uh, the boss was... Was it that security system thing that shot the lasers, or was that a mid-boss? It was. This, it, it was a flying... It was kind of a flying security system thing, like you said, yeah. It just... It would shoot mines at you, and then it would shoot lasers at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was kind of gay. Mm. <laughs> there wasn't really anything cool about it. Stage three, I have a uh, base... I don't. I didn't have anything written down about the level at all. That fool was still attacking you, huh? He was like, didn't you have to fight him? Yeah. Who base? Yeah. Yeah, you had to fight him before you fought the the boss. What an idiot! <laughs> I just beat him with my Buster Cannon. Some of his attacks were really hard to mm-hmm. to avoid. Like he did this one attack where he'd shoot a bunch of like fireballs into the air and then come back down and hit. And there were small little slivers of space that you could stand between to yeah. avoid him. But then, as soon as you were did that, another fireball would fall in that exact space, and you had to step slightly to the right to avoid another series of balls. I remember that. Yeah, that attack was like almost impossible to avoid. Like I never avoided it. I, I think I might have avoided the first wave one time, but I couldn't avoid the second wave. So if he would have just kept doing that over and over, I don't think I would have been able to <laughs> beat him. But I just beat him with my Buster Cannon. And then after that, there was a, a green blob thing. Oh, that had yeah. A, like a cyclops thing in the middle of it. The yellow devil, mm-hmm. but the green devil. Yeah. Remember that when we were done with Mega Man 1, had that blob going across? That was like an updated version. Oh, really? Yeah, but this one was heck easy. I used the thunder thing on him. Yeah, that's what I did too. It just like boom, boom, and just killed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I did also. And it was then, pretty easy once it, I figured that out. And then it was the boss gauntlet? Yep, then the boss gauntlet. And then Wiley. I didn't beat Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley was so much easier than Part 7 on this one. I had a hell of trouble with Part 7, but this one, I, I, it was easier for me. I beat, I fought him a couple of times. I was like, oh, I'll just beat him some other time and never went back to it. Because oh. you don't want to play that Stage 1 over again. <laughs> oh, man, I don't blame you for that. I think the first form, I used my Flame Sword on him. Mm. And then the second form, he was being a bitch and flying around. I can't remember what I used to beat him. The ball? No. Oh. I the, f- the first form was like a tank thing. Yeah. That would like, the wheels would come off and, and either roll at you or bounce at you. Yeah. And then there was a laser that he would shoot at you if you didn't keep attacking the the face of the tank. Yeah. I used the uh, the flash bombs on that and mm-hmm. it, it would prevent the, the lasers from shooting at you. Oh, okay. And then 
the second forum, he was just floating around. He had like orbs going around him. At, whenever he would move, he would just like shoot the orbs at you, and they would either like go in circles yeah. towards you, or there was, or they would like kind of go at you, uh, and then they would go at you once, and then they would stop, and then they'd go at you again. That's so like, you had to like slide at the last second in order to avoid them. Seven, yeah. I remember that. But I don't remember what I used to beat him. I just used my Buster Cannon then. Because he was really I think high that's up. That's what I did. With he the was really high. Game. He was really high up, so you couldn't really do a whole lot. I guess you could have kicked the ball at him, but I, like I said, I didn't really use that. I used the Buster Cannon, and then when he was low enough, I used the uh, the Flame Sword on him. Yeah. All right, big improvement for Mega Man Seven. Yeah, definitely. What did you buy any of the power ups? I know you said that you... Yeah, I bought a lot of them. Really? Yeah, and I bought... you didn't get the one that you could have four of it, man? I thought that was cheating. <laughs> Do you remember which ones you got? Uh, I got both of the the arrow laser, <laughs> like the arrow buster and the know laser you, buster. <laughs> I don't know why you bought those. Because <laughs> they were the most, like, some of the most expensive ones. I was tempted by those. Did they do anything cool? No. Yeah, I didn't really see any reason why I would ever need them. I bought the one that didn't blow you back when you got hit. That's the, the one. That was the first one that I got. And then I bought the... It's called like the power shield or something like yeah. that. I bought the four lives one, and then I bought the one that refilled your four lives on exit on a level. Oh, cool. And then um, there were a couple other ones that I bought that I can't that I escape my mind right now. I only got three. I got the power shield. Um, I got the, the one that... You could charge up your uh, Buster Cannon really quick. It was yeah, like a, I needed that one. Yeah, like yeah, that's one I bought. I bought that booster one enhancer or turbo enhancer or something like that. And then I bought the one that uh, allows you to. Uh, it'll fill up the lowest weapon yeah. whenever you pick up the little charger things. Yeah. So you don't have to like select the weapon and pick it up. It'll just do it automatically. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> so yeah, ton better than Mega Man Seven. <laughs> what are, What are we doing next week? going to go to the X series or move on? I don't know. We'll have to collaborate and find out. Collaborate? Collaborate. Same thing. Yeah. Um, so, before we move into top five, I, I uh, am doing a football pool at work. <laughs> and I just wanted to get Nick's opinion on my picks. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not the greatest at this, but go ahead. Okay. Um... So the first game is Broncos against Ravens. I put Ravens because they have a killer on the team. He's not on the team anymore, but go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that defeats my whole strategy for that one anymore. <laughs> Why wouldn't you put the Broncos? Because Broncos could stomp Ravens. No, but they. I th- at this time I thought Ray Lewis was still on the team. And he, he got that intensity of a killer. <laughs> a rapist wit. Yeah. So, uh... Next is the Patriots against Bills. For one, I hate New York teams. And two, Tom Brady is pretty dreamy, so I picked the Patriots. That's probably a good pick. Uh, Bengals against the Bears. Uh, I, I picked the Bears because the Bears could eat Bengals. I wouldn't pick the Bears because Jeffrey liked the Bears. Oh, does he? Yeah. That's my favorite team. Then. <laughs> I'll change it. I forgot about that. <laughs> I have to make sure to start <laughs> that on before I turn it in. Uh, Dolphins and Browns. I picked the Dolphins because of the Dan Marino, Dan Marino. Le- Dan oh. Marino legacy, <laughs> uh, and also because a lot of people don't like the color brown. <laughs> they don't have a symbol on their helmet. And it's just orange. Who would you go with, Dolphins or Browns? You're saying the Browns is orange. Their, their helmet? Is it orange? I think so. The, I, think, I thought it was brown. I'd like to think that it was brown. <laughs> I always thought they had an orange helmet. <laughs> Who do you like for the Dolphins and the Browns? <laughs> they both suck. I don't know. Okay. The <laughs> Dolphins be, suck now? Go with the Dolphins. Who cares? Okay. Uh, so, Saints and Falcons. Of course, I put Saints. <laughs> for obvious reasons. A lot of people think the Saints are going to do good this year, so awesome. that's probably okay. Those have always been our team because our Bartholomew side is from New Orleans. Yep. Uh, Tampa Bay and New York Jets. I know David Rounds really likes the Tampa Bay Bucks, <laughs> but New York, I have to go against the New York team, so I'm putting Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, t- Titans against Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, Jeremiah loves the Steelers, so I'm picking Titans. It's a good choice. Uh, Minnesota Vikings and Detroit Lions. This was very 
hard because I really like the color purple. Uh, but I went with the Lions for nostalgic reasons. They're the first, first football team I ever watched on TV. And plus, um, from Detroit, Home Improvement took place in Detroit. <laughs> okay, that's another good reason. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next was the Colts against the Raiders. I hate the Raiders, so I'm going with the Colts. Uh, Seahawks against Carolina Panthers. No, no choice there. Uh, I love the weather in Seattle. It's always gloomy and rainy, so I pick Seattle. Jacksonville Jaguars against Kansas City Chiefs. I hate the mascot of the Chiefs, um, so I'm going with the Jaguars. Who's the mascot? It's some. They have an Indian on their helmet. I know, but. Or the KC. I don't like the KC. Oh, you say you don't like the logo. Lo- logo, yeah. <laughs> the mascot's a K and a C. <laughs> <laughs> Just someone walking around like this. <laughs> and then like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, for those you can't see that, I mimicked a K and a C with my arms. <laughs> the Cardinals against the Rams. Although I don't like the weather in Arizona. Again, I have to go with the Cardinals. <laughs> Mark McGuire was on the Cardinals, wasn't he? <laughs> I think on the baseball version. Yeah. Um, Wait, is it Cardinals against Rams? Yeah. Oh, that's a dilemma then, because Mark McGuire played in St. Louis, and the Rams play in St. Louis. Was it the St. Louis Cardinals? Yeah. Oh, the Cardinals it. trumps it because that's the bird. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. That's the actual team name. Uh, Packers against 49ers. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I put the Packers <laughs> just because Matt really likes the 49ers. <laughs> Who, our brother? Yeah, and, and, and Jose. And Jose. Oh, Jose too, and, yeah. And Angelina. Yeah. Does she like the 49ers? Yeah, she oh. loves the 49ers. Oh, sorry, Nick. I had to put the Packers. That's I hope good. the 49ers win, though. Uh, Cowboys and New York Giants. Cowboys. <laughs> New York Giants, of course, going against. But the Cowboys, because of Troy Aikman, uh, <laughs> second favorite team, and Zachy B- McBee, Zach Attack, really likes the Cowboys. And so does Brian Gerber. And so do the Bartholomew Twins. Yes. High five. <laughs> uh... Philadelphia Eagles and Washington Redskins. Again, I don't like the Redskin mascot. The chief on the... If you're going to do a Redskin, you should really put like a better looking Indian than a sad Indian on their face. <laughs> like a, a sad in, look on their face on the helmet. Uh, but of course, Philadelphia Eagles because of Invincible. That's a great movie. <laughs> Marky Mark. <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, well, last and least, San Diego Chargers against Houston Texans. I don't like Houston or Texas. <laughs> so I'm going to San Diego. Nice weather there. Yeah. That's some good logic. Yep. I'm looking forward to that. You should do that every week. All right. <laughs> and I'll come up with different ones every time. Okay. Top five. Top five albums post-2000, <clears throat> post-millennium. So 2000 to current. I had trouble with this list. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I've got a few albums on here that I don't think would constitute as albums, but <laughs> I put them on there. I, um... Actually, it's pretty easy for me. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so I guess I'll start. Well, actually, um, let's have a differentiation. Let's see, me. Well, I guess it's going to be me and you back to back either way. So I guess I'll start. My number five is going to be Lady Gaga, The Fame Monster. Okay. A lot of great songs off that movie. A uh, CD. It's a double CD. I actually got it stolen out of my car when my car got stolen. And I had to download all the songs again. But uh, Bad Romance, Paparazzi, great songs. Yeah, I, I, I like Lady Gaga. She, actually, I just like that album. I don't like anything. She I don't like her that. as a person, Yeah, but I, I like her music. And her music videos are pretty cool. What don't you like about her as a person? I don't know her personality. She's just like, wants attention all the time. She's going to be in the new Machete. Oh, really? Yeah. That's didn't another it, did... attention getter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sofia Varaga is in it, too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. And That's Char- cool. Charlie Estevez or Carlos Estevez. <laughs> is that uh, Emilio Estevez's brother? Uh, Charlie Sheen. Yes. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's hecka tight. You, you did. <laughs> did you see the rest of Charlie Sheen? No. Oh, yeah. It was hecka funny. William Shatner kept calling him Carlos and Emilio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> He's the president. <laughs> that's tight. You, didn't they run that trailer during the Kickass movie? I don't think so. 
I seen it twice. I, I saw. I saw. Did you it see it at Blue Oaks yeah. twice? Well, I, I no, I saw it at the drive-in the second time. Yeah. But this, they played the same trailers. I didn't. I don't remember seeing it. Did you guys see Machete? I didn't. I just didn't no. I, I have to pick it up at Dimple. I've right. been looking for No Holes Barred. I can't find that movie. I thought anywhere. you said you ordered it. No, I said I was looking at for it at Dimple. Oh, I thought Brad told me you, you ordered it. I, I'm going to. I'm going to order it from Amazon because I went to every Dimple and they don't have it. <laughs> Surprise. T- Tim Wilson, I was talking about Machete with him. He told me that there's a part where uh, Danny Trejo uh, repels down a, a building with someone's intestines. Like, he pulls wow. into their body and he uses that to repel down a building. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty tight. <laughs> I heard Danny Trejo's a dick in real life, though. No, he, he um hosted uh, Jay and Son and Bob Get Old a few times with Jason Mewes. Oh. They talk about their drug addictions and stuff. I don't think he, he would have been. He he's like a Mexican Uncle Ron. Oh okay. The way he he'll like Jason Mewes will try to be all serious, and all of a sudden he'll yell at, like machete <laughs> <laughs> and all these funny things. Like they'll like go back and forth, and the catchphrase will come up, and then he'll try to bring it up again like a half hour later. <laughs> it's like a funny. Uh, my number five was Inhuman Rampage from Dragon Force. Oh, that's tight. Uh, released in two thousand six. That's the band's third album. They're from England. The The two main guys in the band, Sam Totem and Herman Lee, put on a hell of a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to San Francisco and saw them a few years ago. Uh, they have trampolines on the stage, and they have like fans blowing everywhere, so their hair is just going crazy the whole time. Uh, they're, they're thought to be you know, the fastest band in the world. I just love that band a ton. Of course, they gained a lot of notoriety from uh, Guitar Hero 3 uh, with the Through the Fire and Flames. Um just that's how I learned about this band was from this album and I've been a huge fan of them since you know Matt called me uh, a few nights ago and we were actually talking about that night we went to San Francisco Mm -hmm. he said uh, yeah it was you me Nick his girlfriend at the time I think they were married and one other person I said yeah Aaron he's like we went to that nasty Chinese food place. Oh, that was pretty gross. And uh, he said that was the first time he ever ate soy sauce on his food. Oh, really? Yeah, he said, um, yeah, you got me to eat it because you said, taste this, it tastes like meat. Now whenever I eat rice or soy or Chinese food, I need soy sauce. <laughs> and we talked about that band, band the Ho- Horse the Band. Oh, yeah. Those guys are dicks. <laughs> but didn't that didn't that night introduce Matt to one of the one of his, the bands that he liked like all that remained yep. or something like mm-hmm. that? And he bought one of their sweaters. Yeah, magical night. That was cool. That's like the one of the very few times that I've actually hung out with Matt. Mm-hmm. The other times, of course, were our adventures. Yeah, <laughs> he's coming home in ninety days. He said. I saw that. That's cool. <clears throat> uh, my number five. Um, Four words, and justice for all. Metallica released in 1988, but I got it in 2003. <laughs> you gotta do this shit again. <laughs> Go ahead. I almost did that with Hope Billy Deluxe. So I'm like, nah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I just thought that would have been pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> my number five is Enemy of Progress from Pipe Down. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a heck of tight CD local band um, they actually did a pre-release of this CD and Nick got the first copy I was kind of jealous of <laughs> he got number two out of a hundred I got number three out of a hundred number one <laughs> the first guy to the uh, band member but that song uh, or the whole album is fast and I really like it yeah uh, it remi- reminds me of uh, college days because Mark Cook and I would always listen to it on the way home from <laughs> from school. It's another band that puts on a really good show. Yeah. yeah. The I kind me- of energy. I remember they had a, um, we thought they were done and we all went outside because it was extremely hot we were all sweating and they started playing again. I was like, oh man, <laughs> gotta go back in there and bear the heat again. <laughs> I think I, 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 I remember, I think I went to that show. That's where uh, I, I emulated the pusher. <laughs> there, and on the hardcore shows there's a guy who would just stand there and push people in the circle pit so this one guy got on some other guy back and was going around in a circle and I just pushed him and they both fell down <laughs> and Jason Johnson looked at me and was like yeah <laughs> my number four is going to have to be the Kill Bill Volume 1 soundtrack you know what when I was going to when I uh <laughs> 
when I was thinking about the list, I was like, I'm going to ask Brad if he had any soundtracks on his, on his uh, list, because I, I knew that one was going to be on there. Yeah, they have a bunch of cool songs. They have the Green Hornet theme. They have uh, Esmeralda, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, which is like a 10-minute song. It's a really good song. Um, they debut the five, six, seven, eights on there. Um, a surf rock band from Japan plays in their, uh, what's his name, Quinn Tarantino makes them play in their bare feet. On the, in the movie because he has a fetish of bare feet. <laughs> what a fucking creep! <laughs> you notice like all his movies, it, it got bare feet in them. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I'm thinking about that now. Yeah, he does. I bet you he licked John Travolta's feet a few times <laughs> in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Not whole, even in Pulp Fiction. In the whole thing with the foot massage. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. In real life. Yeah, yeah, probably. But uh, it's got a lot of good instrumental pieces on it as well. And it, uh, it's really, I got it, it's, it's really good CD. Okay. <clears throat> My number four is Comfort Eagle by Cake, mm -hmm. released in 2001. It's a Sacramento rock band. Um, loved Cake for the longest time, ever since their first album, uh, Motorcade of Generosity. They, they changed their sound quite a bit after that first album. The first album was very raw sounding. Pretty much everything after that sounds somewhat similar they haven't really progressed a whole lot since their second album but the second and third albums were released in the 90s so i couldn't put those on there um fashion nugget and prolonging the magic <clears throat> but I this prolonging the magic yeah, that's a good album i mean they're all good but like i said they kind of sound somewhat similar they haven't really progressed a whole lot but yeah. i still like them a lot it's just there's not a whole lot of differentiation between the albums matt hates that band me um our brother he says they all, all their songs sound the same, and then he doesn't even sing. <laughs> I guess his, one of his ex-girlfriends used to like Kick a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, Rosie? The, no, uh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly, that yeah. dyke. Yeah, and um, he was like, she, oh, she doesn't play the stupid Cake music. <laughs> He's got a point. I mean, like I said, a lot of their songs do kind of sound similar. He doesn't sing so much, but he does sing. Or I get, He does sing. He just doesn't really have a very good voice. But what he does do is he stays in tune mm -hmm. with what with the music that's going on. Yeah. And he also harmonizes. I don't know if there's other guys in the band that harmonize with him or if he just overdubs his own voice. But they do a lot of cool uh, harmonizing as well. Um, in fact, the one song that I mentioned from this album, of course, the one that most people know, a short skirt, long long jacket. Yeah. The one that Brandon <laughs> stole a point from me from, with. The, that was a five pointer. <laughs> man, I would have won if I had got, had that one. <laughs> But anyway, the one song that I noticed noted on here that was my favorite song is a song called Pink Ribbon or Pretty Pink Ribbon. There's a ton of harmonizing in this song. It just it's just a mid tempo song, very simple song, but it just sounds so good and just it's very very relaxing. Yeah. I highly encourage anyone to listen to that song. It's just it's fun to listen to, just mellow. It's, I, I I loved that band for a long time and I still do. Speaking of Kelly, we saw her at the graduation, Lexi's graduation. Oh, yeah? She was sitting like six seats over and two rows down, and she had her baby, her kid, and mom was heck of looking to see if it looked like Matthew, uh, because there's a debate <laughs> on whether her child was Matthew's or not. Yeah, I remember, um, I, I if I were to see her in a crowd, I wouldn't be able to point her out. I don't have somewhat, like, somewhat remember what she looks like. Remember Matt's army picture when he's like, mm -hmm. like all scared looking? Imagine that, but with pale white skin, curly brown hair, like go, that goes down to here, and that's her. Okay, she looks like Matt? Kind of, a okay. white version of Matt. Okay. Because she's a lesbian. Right. I think it's your turn. Okay. Uh, number four is going to be, uh, by the way, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, this album reeks of nostalgia for me. I got this album right around the time we started playing softball <laughs> and right around the time we started going to the Dragon Ball tournaments. Yeah. That, I actually forgot about I didn't know it came out in 2000, otherwise I would have put that. But, um, yeah, like, there would be times when I would... I don't know why I would just be at your house from, like, morning to night. Do when, you know what? Because you didn't have a car. Uh -huh. We had to pick you up in the morning and drop you back off while me and Karen went to work. Uh huh. And then we'd come back home and you'd be there. And so we could go to the tournament. Yeah. So Oh, really? Yeah. And then you like it watch Jordan sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would watch M T V all the time when they used to play music. Mm -hmm. And um 
they do the top 20 countdown and by the way would always be on there and, and and you were like jordan really likes this music video do you remember which one it was no doubt underneath it all yeah yeah because i like that one it was, it was a good uh, music video uh yeah but we would play softball and uh it's when i got my car too and that's one of the first cds i bought that i could listen to in my car and uh just good songs on it. Yeah, I, I remember listening to By the Way going to um, Dragon Ball tournaments. Yep. Like every tournament we went to, we'd throw that song on, get it, get pumped, it pumped up. up. Um, my number three is going to have to be the soundtrack to Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of great songs on it, especially the final showdown. Uh, I don't think Tribute's on that CD, no. which is a really good song too. But the Beers of Boss showdown, I still have that on my phone and it's like... Whenever it comes on, I never skip it because it's so epic. I like uh, Bach Rock. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the second track. And Master Exploder. <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> Master Exploder, sorry. And the uh, Baby Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> that Baby Sasquatch, or when Jack Black was this Baby Sasquatch, it reminded me of uh, Al Van. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't know why, but it does. I guess Jack Black reminds me of Al Van. And it's yeah. funny, when we were... Uh, I was driving with the kids to work to drop them off at school and stuff and I had and tribute came on and Willie said is this Black Jack? I said Jack. close it's Jack Black he's like oh okay because <laughs> they want school of rock yeah on the uh, way home from your soccer tournament your soccer game uh, tribute came on and Logan he really dug it he's like can you play that one again That's I was tough. like yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was the, do you know the name of the song where he jumps on the roof and Knocks out the cameras or whatever. Storm the gate. <laughs> Storm the that's gate. Right. Yeah. That's my favorite song on there. <laughs> he like uh, sings everything he's doing. <laughs> hide behind the bushes. <laughs> I have that song memorized. I can sing it right now, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> uh, my number three is an album that Brandon and I actually co-owned together. TV Game Metal by Power Glove. Yeah. It's a Japanese import. It was uh, released in 2012. That's why Brandon and I co on it because it's fucking expensive to get here <laughs> in America. I think it was like $35, maybe 40 bucks after shipping and stuff. But um, it's actually a collab. Well, they were remastered and I think they were actually reproduced and probably re-recorded actually. But it's a bunch of songs that they released on earlier albums like Saturday Morning Apocalypse and uh, Metal Combat for the Mortal Man. Uh, both those albums were released in the 2000s, just so you don't think I'm cutting any hmm. corners here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I just recently got this album. I can't stop listening to it. It's got so much good music on there. The one song that I don't really like is the song that you guys probably like. The <laughs> it's the only song on the album that has any lyri any lyrics, any vocals. It's the Pokemon song. <laughs> that song's hella tight. I skip over that song every time. I, I don't care for Pokemon. I don't care for that song. But every other piece of music on there I absolutely, absolutely love. There's stuff from Final Fantasy. I think there's like four different tracks from Final Fantasy games. There's a couple tracks from Mega Man 2. Uh, there's one from Castlevania 2. Mega uh, Man X, the Storm Eagle one. Oh, okay. I, I, you're right. The, 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 I think like the third track is from Mega Man X. Um, they have the Simpsons th theme song mm, on there, yeah. which I guess you can argue there's vocals in that one as well, but it's just like operatic, yeah. dramatic stuff. And they just spell it, they spell it with Simpsons. <laughs> well, Take a time. And of course, it has the uh, the theme from Wily Stage 2, yeah, which we all that's love the very best much. track on that next to the Pokemon one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah, you know what? The, the game that I forgot? Fucking Guilty Gear X2. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Holy Orders from uh, Kaikaiski's stage, <laughs> or however you want to pronounce his name. That's a fucking awesome piece of music. Yeah. I love that. I love the very beginning of, the, of that track, like three seconds in, you can hear a sword being unsheathed. Yep. Oh my god, That's I get a boner when I hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yes, it's about to be on. Uh, my number three is Welcome to the Black Parade from My Chemical Romance. Uh, know, that, know that CD, Inside It Out. Uh, Nick and I went to Vegas and just listened to that constantly on the way up there uh, our first time. And I actually played that CD when I would play Final Fantasy XII in Vegas. So I was like, 
This is tight. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good soundtrack. A good CD. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I know you have soundtracks on your list. I have an album. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I sent back when you sent the email. Albums equal CDs. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's basically like a um, story of just remorse and death and becoming one with yourself. I really enjoy it. There's a lot of cancer-related mm -hmm. yeah. uh, songs on there. Which I don't really get. I mean, I don't have cancer. <laughs> okay. It's about the devastation of the and, cancer. Comedy. And the hidden track is pretty cool. Uh, the yeah. Blood song. Yeah, that is a fun song. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, my number two is going to be City of Evil from Event Chevensfold. Uh huh. Um, uh, I believe Nick or Aaron got that for me. Uh, I think Nick did. And yeah, he got me Wake in the Fallen. Yeah, and um, it has a lot of great songs on that. The Beast and the Harlot, M.I.A. Great album. Um, of course Matt's a big Avenged Sevenfold fan, and uh, it's just when I listen to it, it reminds me of him. So that's why I put it on my list. It's a good one. It's on my honorable mentions. My number two is Black Black Clouds and Silver Linings from Dream Theater, released in 2009. <clears throat> so, Dream Theater is a progressive metal band. This is their 10th album, so they've been around for quite a long time. Um, it's also the last album that features the drummer Mike Portnoy, who was a founding member of the band. He's generally thought of as the best drummer in the world, so it's kind of his swan song, I guess you could say. After this album, they had some sort of differences. I guess the band wanted to take a break. No, it wasn't. It was, the it was he wanted to take a break. He wanted to be able to have some freedom to do other projects, but the band just wanted to keep on going, so he ended up splitting up with them. But anyway, um, there's only six tracks on the album. I think maybe six or seven. I think there's seven tracks on the album. So there's, and the album's like 80 minutes long. So you can tell it's, they're all very long tracks. That's how progressive metal bands usually do their stuff. Their, their songs are generally pretty long. And all, all of them are about, you know, personal things that each member of the band has gone through. The two people that write uh, the, the lyrics and the music mostly are uh, Mike Portnoy and the guitar player, John Petrucci. I love the guitar player. He's my favorite guitar player ever, really. Um, but the one song that I really, really liked is a song called um, The Count of Tuscany. It's the very last song on the album. Um, it's an epic song. It's like 20 minutes long. It's It just has so many moving parts. There's all sorts of different feelings that you get from each different part. And it brings back a little bit of a memory for me. Um, Aaron, our friend Aaron Gerwer lives in Philadelphia. He only gets to come out to, to California every once in a while. But uh, one time he came back a couple years ago, Mike Bunt, our friend Mike Bunton and I took him to the Mirror Woods, Redwoods, uh, just north of San Francisco. And as we were leaving there, the song The Count of Tuscany was on. It was on. It was like the third stage of the song or so. And it's just a very ethereal sounding piece of music. It's just soothing. There's no drums or anything like that. It's just all sorts of different sounds that kind of make you feel different sort of emotions and it just was so fitting to the environment that we were in and what we had just experienced with the redwoods and you know just being able to interact with one another like it was old times and so it brings back a lot of good memories for me that's good yeah uh <clears throat> number two for me was Amer american uh, i knew you were going to say that american, american idiot, idiot for uh, green day uh I got this CD um, and listened to it for like nine months straight. Uh, at first, I got it. I liked it because it was catchy, but uh, you know, of course, they play the singles on the radio and you get it for the boom. When you continue to listen to it, it gets deeper with the story and it plays so, so, kind of like a rock opera throughout from beginning to end. Uh, and you just have these theories of the characters in the story, what they've gone through how they grow up, how they come to pass. Uh, it basically tells a tale of, uh, like, track one, American Idiot, sets the stage of where in society this album is going to take place, how, uh, where the political structure is, uh, and it moves to track two, which is Jesus of Suburbia, where you meet the main character, Jesus of Suburbia. He's named after just a random kid who... Uh, rebellious against his uh, father and mother. Actually, his father and mother are divorced, just like how divorces run rampant in uh, America today and the world. 
Uh, he goes through and meets a girl. What's her name? Uh, track three holiday is part. Her, her name is what's her name? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, track three holiday is I, probably my second favorite song on that track or on the album. Uh, my first either being Jesus of Suburbia, the second track, or track ten or twelve, which is Homecoming. Both very long songs, but it's just a general uh, just go through. It's kind of, kind of people have likened it to one of the Who's albums they did a rock opera. Uh, I didn't. I could never pick find that one and pick it up. I've always wanted to compare the two, but uh, the final track, "What's Your Name," is just a just a fitting into the whole CD, um, and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I listen to it constantly, and I still listen to it today. Cool. So my number one, we're on number one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Nickelback? No, it's not. All the right reasons. You are such a liar. I should punch you in the face for that. I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be joking. Man. Oh yeah, I'm joking. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Nickelback sex stick. Uh, I am number one's got to be Stadium Arcadium. Oh, uh, that's from, on my HMs from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, only because not only is it a great album, it's got a lot of cool songs on it. Uh, Snow, uh, Stadium Arcadium, of course, um, Slow Cheetah, especially in Michigan. And then what's that one? What was their hit song off of it? Um, was the, it the Dad in California? California? Yeah, yeah. When they did the music video and yeah. they portrayed the Misfits on it. Uh, but also, that's the um, first real big concert I went to was Stadium Arcadium. And um, Matt was there and Brandon. And a little side story is, oh, yeah. uh, I was like, dude, when they come out on stage, I'm going to throw my underwear on on the stage. Because we're pretty close. We're like four or five seats away, four or five rows away from the main stage. <laughs> so first Mars Volta came on, which only had really good song, The Widow. Uh, I didn't like any other, other and songs. Was, and all their songs are like 89 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the lights, I have on uh, shorts and then I have on boxer briefs, so... I uh, took one leg out of bon off my underwear, <laughs> slid it over, took the other leg off, and <laughs> put it in a ball. And there, <laughs> wait, <laughs> we get to the to the um, Arco Arena where they're playing at like five o'clock in the afternoon. It's summer, hot as hell, sweaty, and we wait in line for probably two hours in that heat. And imagine that between Brad's legs all the ball sweat and there's that collected in his underwear <laughs> and I was constantly like itching and rubbing and soaking up the sweat between my sack and my leg and even when the people and when the you know the uh -huh. the show was going on it, it's all hot and sweaty there yeah, too and, and Mars Volta was on so that's like another hour and a half <laughs> that we have to wait so Mars Volta they leave the stage finally and then so I take my underwear off, pull it up, and it's like dripping. Oh, gross. <laughs> and so the lights go on, everyone's, yeah. And I throw my underwear of launcher, <laughs> and all of a sudden the lights come on, and the air kicks on, and the underwear is <laughs> bearing onto some dude's head, and he's all like. <laughs> he doesn't even touch him. He throws him off with his own head. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he just got my ball sweat on his face. <laughs> I really wish they would have made it on stage, but they didn't. <laughs> but then uh, after the show was over, which was a great show, we went to go find him, and they were nowhere to be found. Someone mm, took him home. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's why I put that as my number one. <laughs> nice. Uh, my number one album is The Odyssey from Symphony X, another progressive metal band. It's their sixth album from uh, New Jersey. This is probably my favorite band right now. Um, ever since I was introduced to them, probably like 2003, 2004, the, the first song that I heard from theirs, the first track on the album is called Inferno. Oh my god, this song <laughs> fucking rules so hard. Right from the opening beat, the, their guitar player is probably my second favorite guitar player. His name's Michael Romeo. Kick-ass name, by the way. <laughs> Who's your first favorite? John Petrucci from uh, Dream Theater. Um, this is probably my favorite singer from this band, though. His name is Michael Russell. He's an excellent singer. But right from the first beat of this album, this song called Inferno. Oh, my God. It's just He's just shredding. Shredding all over the place. And it's like insta-boner, dude. <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. The, the Like I said, the name of the album is called The Odyssey. So, of course, you got to write a song about The Odyssey by Homer. 
Last track of the album is another epic song about 20 minutes long. It summarizes basically the, the entire story of Odysseus. Uh, it's such an awesome that's song. Kind of, I'm gonna that up. It's so fucking sick, dude. Uh, probably 2004, 2005. Uh, Aaron Gerwer, Alvan Friend, and I went to San Francisco to go see this band. And you know, you hear how bands always do their encore. Like, they walk off stage acting like it's all over, and everyone uh-huh. says, Symphony X, Symphony X, whatever. They come back out on stage, and everyone says, Odyssey, <laughs> Odyssey. And then they start playing it like, Oh, oh my God. Oh, dude, that would be so tight. It's one of the best moments in my life when they played that, when I got to hear that live. It's so <laughs> fucking awesome. So, that, like I said, that's probably my favorite band right now. And. This is the album that introduced me to them. I just love them. There's so much energy, so much metal. So the guitar playing is just a brilliant. The guy's just a great singer. I'm not a stickler for lyrics, but I mean, I I, I enjoy his lyrics too. Yeah, just everything about this band, I just love. I can't wait to hear any new albums that they might have. But this was my favorite one because it was the first one that I'd heard. My number one one was City of Evil. Uh, I talked to Matt about it. I was telling him we were doing albums. He's like, dude, you should check out their album Nightmare. Have you guys heard Nightmare? Yeah. The, you yeah. know who's dr- the drummer on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dream Theater. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I picked up uh, Nightmare at Dimple the other day. And the first track is just amazing. Nightmare. That song is so tight. Um, My fucking nightmare. Yeah. yeah it, it's great. Uh, I wanted to listen to it with the kids in the car, and I did. I had Nas in the car, and I turned when it swore, I turned it down, <laughs> and then turned it back up. But uh, of course, he loves that album uh, because it was uh, in memory of the drummer yeah. uh, Reverend. What I can't remember, Reverend whatever. I just call him the, the, everyone the just calls him the Rev. And so uh, that Matt has emotional ties to it. But City of Evil, I don't know what what about it, but whenever I hear MIA, I always get misty eyed. Um, and I, that's the soundtrack that plays through my head when I'm writing, because I'm writing a book, and I always use that as reference. So whenever uh, I have like a battle scene, I throw on M- uh, MIA. It's pretty cool. Beast in the Harlot's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a sick ass song. It's one of my favorite songs to play on Guitar Hero. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think the hidden gem in that CD is Sidewinder. Sidewinder. That's such a good song too. Um, so Sidewinder, City of Evil. Uh, Beast in the Harlot, uh, Backcountry, uh, trash, trash and Scattered, or whatever, and uh, M.I.A. just very emotional. Hmm. What's that one song about the, um, the? it's like 10 minutes long, it's about the guy who kills a girl and the girl kills a guy? That's from uh, Critical Acclaim, that's... Uh-huh. Um, a Little Piece of Heaven yeah, or something? Yeah, Little Piece of Heaven. Yeah, that song's tight too, the yeah. music video was awesome. Yeah, I, that... that me might not over mentioned, but critical claim was on there and uh when that, I, when I go to the gym and I do the uh elliptic glide, I throw that song on there because it's so long and then like it's up my the cardio is almost over because it takes so long. That um song A Little Piece of Heaven reminds me of sushi. <laughs> because I would whenever I'd go get sushi when I used to live in Citrus Heights I'd always put that C D that song on. <laughs> I like getting a little piece of heaven some sushi. Nice. The Ron Ron roll. Yeah. <laughs> what that, that was called? Yeah, I, did, I only got that once. Oh. I used to get the um, barbecue tuna, which was amazing. I love barbecue tuna. And I did, tuna. they have a UFO. They had uh, the 911, or no, the Highway 50. That was bomb. That was a deep, deep fried roll. Uh, at Arigato's, they have a roll called the Sexy Roll. <laughs> have you ever got that? Dude, I went with Willie. I took him. Because I was like, man, I never have anyone to go sushi with. Demila doesn't like it. Naja doesn't like it. So I took Willie and went to Arigato's. I forgot all about the Sexy Roll. Did, did you know what it is? No. It's like a triangle soy wrap roll with, with rice on the... They do soy wrap and rice. And then in the middle is uh, salmon, spicy tuna, fresh cut jalapeno... And it's like, and then they put sriracha sauce on top. It's mm. so good. Mm. I highly recommend it for you guys who live in Sacramento who go to Aragatos. Mm. Anybody have any honorable mentions? Yeah. Um, the uh, I had the Oh Brother, Where Art Thou soundtrack. Mm. I debated on putting that on there, but don't win a lot of soundtracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, Stadium Arcadium. Uh, that's... I found out the date of that release, I think, 
in January. It was coming out May 9th of 2007. So I requested that day off as my floating holiday at work and went and got it and listened to it. And you made copies for everyone. I did. I forgot about that. Did you say May 9th? Yeah, your birthday? <laughs> yeah. I was probably off that day too. Yeah. Even though I probably wasn't supposed to be. Um, I I had quite a few honorable mentions. Uh, many of them have already been uh, mentioned in the top fives of uh, Brad and Brad and Brandon. Tenacious Day, Pick of Destiny, had that one. Uh, Avenge Sevenfold, Se City of Evil, My Chemical Romance, The Black Parade. Um, one of them I wrote down here. The only soundtrack that I have is the Book of Mormon, the original oh, Broadway yeah. cast recording. That's nice. That's <laughs> that album is so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> I just love everything about that. Anytime you get a chance to talk shit about Mormons and their ridiculous beliefs, I'm, I'm all for that. It's funny because uh, when we went to Vegas, I guess Jamila cleaned out the car and she found the Book of Mormon CD. Uh -huh. And she was like, what's the Book of Mormon? I was like, well, back in 1851, Joseph... <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, no, I found this CD. I was like, oh! <laughs> I said, that's a, a CD Nick burned for me. <laughs> he stuck his face into a hat and said he talked to God. And he, only he could look at the golden plate. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good CD. Yeah. Um, the Killers, Hot Fuss, uh, oh, yeah. 2004... Uh, band from Las Vegas. I looked up some of their influences, and there are actually a lot of bands that I don't don't really care for, like The Cure, Morrissey, mm -hmm. The Cars. I mean, Cars are alright, I guess, but I don't. I'm not really into the whole gothic, yeah, alt, emo, emo, alternative, whatever stuff. But just something about this band that I really like. I like I like the way the guy sings. I like the way he writes music. I remember Brandon. We we took him to a um, mm -hmm. strip club, and Matt too, I think. And um, I used to work at Western Dental in Elkhorn, and there was this uh, Asian girl who used to, and she obviously had implants, and on her patient sheet, it said she worked at um, the the Gold Club Centerfold. And then when we went there, it was her, and I was like, why does she look so familiar? And then you got a lap dance from her, and the killer song came hmm. on, um, Somebody Told Me. And that's the first time I heard that song. Yeah. And she kept saying, you look familiar, do I know you? I was like, no. Hey. Huh. And uh, what did she say her name was? Sunshine or something? I don't remember. Oh. Uh, yeah, and you were like, dude, you need to hook me up with that stripper. <laughs> I don't think I said that. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the first of their songs that I'd heard, too, was so Somebody Told Me. And the first time I heard it, I was like, well, that just sounds different from everything else that's on the radio right yeah. now. And it's just, I, I've been hooked on them ever since then. Do you guys want, I, I have like three or four more. Do you guys have any others? Nope. I like 21st Century Breakdown by Green Day, but it wasn't as good as American Idiot, uh, which is that's why I hit honorable mention. Their new CD, Uno Dos Trey. I bought Uno and Dos, but I haven't bought Trey. I don't know. I, I guess when Billy Joe does drugs, it makes him <laughs> a little Is he back on drugs now? He, was, he just got out of rehab, but he was on it when he did Uno Dos Trey, and it, it, it shows. It wasn't, it wasn't a good album. <laughs> Not in my opinion. What's the drummer's name? Uh, Trey Cool. He threw out the first pitch at the A's game last night. Oh, really? Yeah, my wife was there with. Oh, that's cool. Rosa. Yeah, they have a um, uh, well, not him, but Mike Durst, the bassist, bass guitar, has a, ca a cafe in Oakland called Rudy's Cantville Cafe. Hmm. Jamila and I went there. It's very hipsterish with hippies and vegans, and it was all right, but it's too cramped. Yeah. Is that guy related to Fred Durst? Yeah. <laughs> No, Isn't there an N in his name, like Dernst or something yeah, like that? Yeah, oh, okay. Um, I also had Justin Timberlake, Future Sex, Love Sounds. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of gay for me to admit that I like Justin Timberlake, but I, there's just something about him that I really like. He's funny, too. He is fun. He he plays, you know, with the Lonely Island all the time. <laughs> it's funny. But he's also, he's, he's just talented all around. He's, he's mm -hmm. got a good taste for music. He's, Movies, he's runner, runner. I haven't, well, obviously it's not out yet, but yeah. I'm going to see that, of course. Um, I like that in time movie he was in. That was cool. It's kind of like cheesy, a, but it was good. I didn't I, like, I like Olivia it. Wilde. Uh, I know Mad Maddie G gets a boner off of her <laughs> only because he she looks like Nick's sister and they're dating. Is um <laughs> is she the one from Mad Men? No, I don't know. I don't know. There's someone else you like too from Mad Men. Oh, I don't know. I need to start watching that show. I never watch that show. I watch that show all the time, but I don't remember. 
I know she's Pete Campbell's wife, but I don't know if it's the same person. Yeah. Isn't there an Olivia Man and an Olivia Wilde? Yeah, I think so. I don't know which one's which, though. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but there's a lot of good songs on this album. The, the big hits were Sexy Back, My Love, and What Goes Around Comes Around. Um, he has a lot of different influences. Of course, R&B and pop, but there's also a lot of techno. A lot... Funk is what really tur- turns this album around. The, there's yeah. a lot of funky stuff that, that goes on this album. That's kind of what does it for me. Like uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, mm-hmm. they do funk too. Yep, of course. Uh, the, the last album from Pantera, Reinventing the Steel, just barely made the cut for this mm-hmm. for this list. I think it was released in January of 2000. And it was probably the def- definitely not their best album, but because it's Pantera and I love Pantera, I had to throw that on there. Um, probably their best albums were either Far Beyond Driven or, or Vulgar Display of Power, in my opinion. But um, yeah, after, after this album, they broke up. Um, Phil Anselmo was just the, the singer. I love that he's got a great voice, but he's got a bit of an attitude problem. <laughs> he just, I guess they just didn't work anymore after that. And then of course the guitar player, one of the greatest guitar players ever, Dimebag Daryl died in that accident where he got, well, I guess it wasn't an accident. He got shot. <laughs> <laughs> when drug deals gone wrong. No, was it, do you remember hearing about that? Yeah. He got shot on stage by some crazy fanatic guy. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I got. I had to give some props to Pantera just because I had the opportunity to. Um, the Darkness, Permission to Land, mm-hmm. their first album. I love. I love this band. I'm so mad that I didn't get to go see him a couple years ago. They played in May of 2011. It was a reunion tour. Uh, one honorable mention I did want to speak of is the Marshall <laughs> Mathers LP by Eminem. Is that 2000? It's. I think it's 2000, 2003. One of those. But it's after the Millennium. Um, cause I remember I moved out and then it came out. It's got a lot of good songs on it too. Yeah, I was going to put Eminem on there, but I was like, yeah, he could go down there on more mentions. <laughs> that Trailer Park Girl song reminds me of Softball too, cause Mike Bunton was always talking about it. Yeah. Guess Who's Back or whatever it's called? Shady's Back? Something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, another album released around that time, early 2000. I think it was, oh, well, I have it written down, I know. <laughs> it was released in 2000. It was a band called, or band, a hip hop act uh, called Outcast. The album's <laughs> called Stankonia. Uh, this is the album that had um, Miss Jackson. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Fresh, So Clean. I'm sure you guys know that song as well. I, I know that from your status on AIM. And Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, whenever I was away I'd, and I was taking a shower, I'd say, I'm so fresh, so clean, or something like that. Yeah. But my favorite uh, song on the album was a song called Bombs Over Baghdad. It's like a, it's a super fast song, like a lot of techno, but there's a lot of guitars involved as well. It's kind of like a rock techno type song, which uh, I thought was cool because it just, the, just those three songs right there, they're just, they're just all so different. Mm-hmm. So you could see just how different each one of their songs can be. And primarily, the Outkast is a two-man hip-hop group. It's Big Boy and Andre 3000. And Andre 3000 is just the man. Unfortunately, uh, they kind of went their separate ways eventually. And they, in fact, the, the very next album after this, they released a double album, which each of them did their own thing. But they were still considered to be Outkast. But Big Boy is just... I think Big Boy could just make it on his own, to be honest with you, because he's just he's just so creative. He's, he he doesn't have like a regular rapping style. He has a very distinct style where he kind of sings here and there, and he just flows. I just love um, Andre 3000 a lot. Did you see Idlewild? I did see it just uh, a couple years ago, actually. It was pretty good. Yeah, I was surprised. It. So that's all the honorable mentions I have. I could have gone forever, but that's all I wrote down. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny that... Uh... When we were doing the the Armor of Darkness questions, when um, you said the car as a weapon, and Brad said no, mm-hmm. and you said he mowed down heck of freaking <laughs> goblins with that. It's true. <laughs> and I was like, dead eyes, dead eyes are uh, Kendarian demons. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> you heard the kids in the background. Boom stick. I'm like, come on. That's, that's a no-brainer. I they, know, I they, know. they DQ'd you for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know you didn't know that's that. That's like in wrestling when um, <laughs> when like Hogan does the leg drop and then Hogan's friend comes up and just hits the other person with the chair. No, it's like when Ted DiBiase is going to win a belt 
And uh, you're like, you can't win that from Ultimate Warrior. And then, like, Virgil comes in and hits Ultimate Warrior, and they're like, disqualification. (laughs) (laughs) I've been watching a lot of wrestling stuff, actually. Oh. Like, um, what I watch? The Bret Hart um, (laughs) Canadian Montreal screw job or whatever. Did we talk about that on the podcast? Oh, okay. I I watched it, too. I, I fell asleep. While listening to the podcast the, today, uh, the thing about Shawn Michaels is he can never finish a freaking thought. He'll be like, <laughs> and uh, and then we'll start talking about something else. <laughs> like, dude, just fin- it gave my wife a headache. She's like, I can't <laughs> listen to him anymore. Did you see his crooked eye? Yeah, that was heck of funny. I never noticed it until like the later versions of WWF. So I don't know if he got hurt and it went crooked or what. Yeah, I'm sure he got hurt. I've been keeping up on my WWE. I've been trying to watch all the Raws and Smackdowns mm-hmm. now ever since I went to that event a few weeks ago. It's pretty pretty entertaining yeah, stuff. Yeah, I forget how entertaining it is. Did you did you guys hear about that guy who came out, the first openly yeah. gay wrestler? No, is it the guy with this Cobra? Cobra. He has like oh, a... he's go to Cobra, all right. He has like a sock <laughs> on his hand. And he no. calls it the Cobra? No, I don't know that guy. Oh, okay. This guy's name, his name's Darren Young. I don't know if that's his real name, but that's his wrestler's name. He's he's part. What's funny is that when we're uh, when Matt Gerwer and I went to Sleep Train, Train Arena to watch the Monday Night Raw, there were these guys. There and prior to this, I'm not really that into WWE. There were these guys named the Primetime Players, just two black dudes, and they come out on st- onto the into the ring. They're doing their whole entrance thing, and there's two black dudes in front of us who are who are wearing Primetime Players shirts, <laughs> and they're they're getting up and they're dancing along with the Primetime Players because they have this whole entrance thing that they do. And Matt whispered to me, he's all, what if those guys were gay? Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> like, yeah, that would be kind of funny. And then, like, literally, like, three days after that, <laughs> one busted. of the tag team members came, came out. It was kind of, I mean, it's great for him. It's great yeah. for wrestling. It's great for everything, really. And what's funny is that since since then, like I said, I've been watching the Raws and the Smackdowns. They never mention it. Mm. They, they never mention anything about anyone being gay. But they keep putting up putting them up against this other tag team that they're called the the real americans are you mm-hmm. familiar with these guys uh-huh. at all <laughs> they made an appearance while we were while we were there again in sacramento it's basically these guys who just talk about how much they hate illegal immigrants <laughs> and they just talk shit about wherever they're at like in sacramento they're saying how all the illegal immigrants are stealing their jobs and then the next one that i watched <laughs> the next one i watched they were in uh I think they were in Anaheim, and they were talking about how much they hated LAX and how the best part about LAX is leaving LAX, of course, the airport in Los Angeles. And, of course, he made another spiel about how much he hates illegal immigrants. Hey. <laughs> but they keep putting them, putting them up against this black tag team. Of course, <laughs> there's a racial thing there. And every time the, the white real Americans that does a move they'll say we the people like he's like <laughs> representing all white people basically oh, it's, there's a lot of very racist undertones to this team I, I, that's what they're going for but they just don't say it that way <laughs> but even Luke and Butch what were that race <laughs> they're in Australia they're bushwhackers uh, they were no, these guys don't really <laughs> they're obviously trying to cater to some very dang uh, racist people <laughs> uh, what what is what channel is Smackdown on Smackdown 31? is on it's either 31 or 58, or 58 yeah one of those but you know what's weird is uh, did you say Smackdown oh I'm sorry Smackdown is not on either of those channels Raw is Sm- no Raw is on uh, USA. USA Smackdown's on Sci-Fi what <laughs> it's not I don't know if there's an there's two sci-fis. The one that it's on is on S-Y-F-Y. Because huh. I thought there, there was another sci-fi that was just S-C-I-F-I. S-C-I-F-I. They changed their name. It is is mm-hmm. it the same thing? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they're on sci-fi. Okay. It took me a while to find it. Sci-fi? Yeah, it's weird. That's why I couldn't find Sharknado. I was looking under the wrong name. <laughs> yeah. You hear about Shark a- Shark, Shark Valanche? No. Shark Avalanche? <laughs> I saw a Ghost Shark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was heck of a time. I ran in and... Read read off the uh, the little uh, in, encryption of what it's about to Jamila, and she has shook her head. <laughs> she goes shark got tight. Sharknado with iron zeroing. Yeah. <laughs> he was in Las Vegas when we were there. Chippendale. Yeah. Guest hosting for the Chippendales. 
So did you want to talk about how you scared your kid? Oh, yeah. So we went to um, Monterey this past weekend. Uh, it sucked so bad because we went to Monterey. Well, we went to the aquarium, which is cool. Went to this place called Archie's Diner, which is right by the aquarium. I didn't like it at all. I got something called like a Joe Special, and it was like a bunch of spinach mixed with hamburger meat and potatoes. It sucks. Yeah. It was a lot of spinach. Uh, you would have could have sworn it should have been called the Popeye or something. <laughs> but uh, we went to the aquarium. That was cool. We went to the beach. I climbed on a bunch of rocks and saw, saw some crabs that were like this big. So we get to the hotel. Of course, we order pizza from Pizza My Heart. It was all right. I wouldn't order from there again. Huh. But um, those guys advertise on the Giants games all the time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're, it's not that good. Does um, Linda come go there? Probably, if there was a person named Linda <laughs> Uh So, <laughs> around 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, the kids are getting anxious, and I'm not going anywhere. So, Jamila says she's going to take them out by the water. So, she said, I'm going to go out by the because the hotel's right on the water. I'm going to go take them to the water. All right. So, I get up, scratching my chest, looking around, going to the living room, and I see Naja has written down friend list <laughs> and she lists off her friend Nadia Kira no Nadia Michaela and Kira I said this is going to be tight so I take the oh. pen and I put it in my right hand so I, I, I write all weird and I write Simon <laughs> and then I write Simon again under it like a little more darker like more evil and then I hang the pen up on the lamp and then so I um I go back to bed, the kids come up about a half hour later, and then Jamila goes to get snacks and some soda and stuff, because they wanted like $3 for a Twix <laughs> there in the gift shop. So I'm like, that's heck of funny, Nausea. On your friends list, you put Simon. Why'd you put Simon down twice? <laughs> She's like, huh? I was like, yeah, when I was little, I used to tease Matt. Brad and I would tease Matt saying... That we had a third brother named Simon. And he was half hamster. He was half hamster and he was a ghost. <laughs> and he lived in the closet. And we'd say, Simon. And then I was like, that's funny you put that on your list. She's like, what are you talking about? So she, I had thrown it away. So she gets the list out and she puts it down on the table. And she's like, I didn't write this. <laughs> I was like, get out, we'll, get out of here. And then Willie comes up to me and he's like, I didn't write it. <laughs> I didn't write it, Dad. I was like, no, so where's that pen at? Where's that pen at that you had to write this down? I bet you, and then she couldn't find it and she saw it hanging from the lamp. Yeah. I'm getting scared. <laughs> After like five minutes, I was like, oh, I finally, I wrote it. And she was like, you scared me so bad. <laughs> Kids are so fun to scare. They are. <laughs> I drew that man with the fire on his face picture. From Insidious. From Insidious, and I left it open on the kitchen table. And it was broad daylight the next morning. The kids were getting all freaked out about it. And then, <laughs> did they know you drew they it? They knew I drew it. Then why are they getting freaked because out? Because they thought it, that he was going to come. Oh, they thought you, that you, he possessed you? Yeah, or I summoned him or something. Oh. And uh, Jordan's the only one that saw Insidious, and the other two were still scared. <laughs> What I was planning on doing was ripping it out of the book and thumbtacking it to Jordan's wall while he slept and put on the Tiny Tim song, <laughs> Tiptoe Through the Tulips, but I didn't get that far. Uh -huh. But they were still scared of it. They were still like closing the book and I'd open it back up and they'd close it again. That's funny. Yeah, so after we did stay to the hotel, we went up through San Francisco to the Golden Gate Bridge. We went over there to get back to SAC. We wanted to do something else. I was like, let's find something along the way. There's nothing on that way back on Highway 37 we took. It's just one lane. It's pretty cool. I like to, I don't like fighting in traffic. 37, that you do drive by the uh, the raceway. Not that you would be interested in that. Oh, really? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't pay attention. How you, you, come on. <laughs> well, I didn't see it. There's a bunch of traffic there all the time. Oh, Isn't maybe that's... The Sonoma Raceway? Did maybe we, that's uh, when there's a split to Sonoma Napa and then Sacramento. It's like right after that. Oh, okay. There's like a huge sign that says Sonoma <laughs> Raceway, and there's like a cow on there because, you know, there's a whole bunch of cow pastures out there. Oh, I didn't see that. I actually enjoy the races. I went there once with um, my wife and her sister-in-law. To Sonoma? Her sister. 
No, it was down in Roseville. And it was pretty fun. You, you look forward to further crashes and stuff. And <laughs> Ouch. And then um, that's where we found the 1428 Elm Street. It's like on the way there. It's tight. <laughs> but I'm not going to start chewing tobacco and beating my wife. So <laughs> I'm not going that far. <laughs> like most hicks do. Oh, and uh, when we were um, flipping through the channels, I saw Kristen from Not Run Street making the house, the Freddy house. Yeah. Like, oh, and then she was like, what? I said, this is Not Run Elm Street. She's like, I, yes, no, every movie. She changed it to a random channel and said, what's this movie? And I said, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. <laughs> and I just saw the little boy. She's like, <clears throat> so annoying. <laughs> like that's right. I forced my wife to watch all the Night Randall Streets with me when I bought the box set. We like we all like watch two a night. Did she like him? Yeah. She liked him. Yeah. Just me loving like scary movies. Yeah. And I watched um, I Spit on Your Grave yesterday. I was I sent you that text. I tainted your Netflix yeah. because like, because you liked I Spit on Your Grave. <laughs> you could watch rape. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought was going to pop up because that movie was like she gets like vaginally raped anally raped and orally raped in that movie and I was like I didn't want to like turn it off after the rape scene because I didn't want to see <laughs> how you do Netflix you know, I said recently watched and it, I click on it it's right after the rape part yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to finish the movie alright well that's going to cut it for episode 18 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia happy hunting guys